Good morning, my name is Reverend Caroline Keatley, Vicar of St. Mark's Colney Heath, and I would like to welcome you to Digital Sundays. Good morning and welcome once again to Digital Sunday. We're going to be following our series this morning on the power of prayer. And in particular, we're going to be focusing on what it means to intercede, the power of prayer when we pray for others. We're going to be doing some of that too, as Myra leads us in praying for other people. And we're going to be looking at the example of Abraham in the Old Testament, as Mike speaks to us later. And I hope we're going to be inspired and refreshed and re-energised in this great privilege of praying for other people. And so we start our service. We're going to begin with worship, but first a prayer. Father God, we thank you that you draw us to worship you. Would you lift our hearts, we pray. Would you set them on fire with love for you. Amen.
may remember that our families at the moment have a prayer bag full of everyday objects that help you pray. Alex showed us one of those last week. He took a bag of sweets from the prayer bag and prayed a different prayer depending on the colour of the sweet. Good choice, Alex. But there's another great object in this bag and it's this, it's a teaspoon. A teaspoon is something you use every day, quite a lot if you drink as much tea as I do. And a teaspoon, when you abbreviate it, is T-S-P. And those letters stand for ways we can pray. T for thank you, S for sorry, P for please. So before we listen to our sermon and the reading that goes before it that Nick is going to give us in a moment, we're going to use this teaspoon as a way to pray. I'm going to say thank you and sorry. And then I'm going to hand over to Myra for our please prayers, our intercessions for others. Father God, thank you. Thank you for prayer that we can speak to you, our loving Heavenly Father, any time we want and that you hear us. And we're sorry when we don't use this gift as we should. Please forgive us and help us. And over to Myra. So let's continue with our teaspoon prayers, our TSP, as we come to please. Let's pray. Please, Father God, we pray for peace in the many countries where conflict and war is part of their day to day lives. Thinking especially of Myanmar. Give wisdom to all those who endeavour to mediate between opposing sides so that issues are resolved and reconciliation can occur. Through Jesus' name. Amen. Please, Lord, be with all the children, young people and teachers as they return to school this week. Help them as they adjust again to being together and learning together. May the regular covid COVID tests cause minimal trauma to the pupils and staff and minimal disturbance to their daily routine. Through Jesus' name. Amen. Please God, give wisdom to Caroline, Jill and the leadership team and PCC as they make decisions about us returning to meeting together physically in church. Bless the planning for our Easter celebrations and through your Holy Spirit guide Caroline as she leads us out of this lockdown and all the Covid restrictions of this past year. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Please, Heavenly Father, be with us and all those we love. May we really feel your presence, comfort and hope day by day, minute by minute, as we deal with our own personal situations. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And let's bring our prayers together as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 18, verses 20 to 33. Then the Lord said, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grievous that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. 
If not, I will know. The men turned away and went towards Sodom. But Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are fifty righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of the fifty righteous people in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you. Will not the judge of all the earth do right? The Lord said, If I find fifty righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Then Abraham spoke up again. Now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, though I am nothing but dust and ashes, what if the number of the righteous is five less than fifty? Will you destroy the whole city because of five people? If I find forty-five there, he said, I will not destroy it. Once again he spoke to him, What if only forty are found there? He said, For the sake of forty, I will not do it. Then he said, May the Lord not be angry, but let me speak. What if only thirty can be found there? He answered, I will not do it if I find thirty there. Abraham said, Now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, what if only twenty can be found there? He said, For the sake of twenty, I will not destroy it. Then he said, May the Lord not be angry, but let me speak just once more. What if only ten can be found there? He answered, For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. When the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he left, and Abraham returned home. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, about uh, 10 years ago, I was out walking, uh, just walking down the high street somewhere, and a, a sort of ruckus a fight broke out between some what I assume was a, a family in in the high street and I, I sort of wanted to get involved I think it's probably the fixing mentality in me um, and I didn't and for days afterwards I really regretted not stepping in I don't know why I think I I think I was probably thinking could I help here and I wonder if you saw you know, if you could just think of it, if you saw two people uh, sort of having a, a fight in the middle of the street, would you get involved? What about if it was some members of your family? What about if they were getting into a overly heated quarrel? Would you would you get involved then? I guess it depends on maybe how confident you felt that you could make the situation better, because sometimes. <laughs> We don't, do we? We don't make it better by getting involved. And the story we're going to look at today about this great character, Abraham, is all about almost stepping in and getting involved in a quarrel between God and people. But it makes it, I don't want to simplify it, but that's, that's what's going on. And I was reading around, you know, sort of this word that we're we're going to talk about today, the word intercede. We're going to mention it a few times today. It's almost to be a go-between. So it mentions it a few times in Scripture. And there's one that jumped out at me in 1 Kings where a king sort of wrongs God and sort of abuses the altar of God and reaches out to break it down. And his hand sort of shrivels up. And he goes to a man of God and says, would you intercede between me and God? Because I've clearly done something wrong and I can't fix it. So I need someone to intercede on my behalf to step in. And that that is where intercede sort of appears there. It's this stepping in between God and people and almost trying to help them reconcile, trying to 
help them communicate with one another. And we are, we've got a passage which, if I'm honest with you, these two chapters in Genesis 8 and 9 simply mess with my head and have done for years. And I struggle to grasp exactly what's going on and many of the topics in it uh, and conversations perplex me. And if I'm honest, part of it makes me a bit angry. And today is not going to be a theological unpacking of these two chapters and what they mean for our lives, because I'm far from equipped to do that. I mean, I could spend a year studying it and would still feel lost. Um, but we're going to talk about interceding and prayer today, if that's OK, because I bought a commentary for just the bit I'm going to talk about. And I, I got so confused, I nearly ended up buying a commentary, not on the book of Genesis, but on all 21 albums of the band Genesis, which, so if at any point I start saying, follow you, follow me, or talk about God's invisible touch, or that I'm in a land of confusion, then you know I've got my commentary books well and truly mixed up. Although, Jesus, he knows me, maybe that's a good thing to be talking about. So firstly, there's two things I want us to think about here. Just uh, just two things for us to maybe grab from this, may, to me, confusing passage in some way. So there's two things about our prayer life that I think we should grapple with in this passage. Firstly, our prayer life is about our relationship with God and that we should continually invest in that relationship like we would with anyone we loved. Secondly... I think we are called as Christians to intercede, to step in between situations and people so that we can bring their cry to God. And as Christians, we have this unique access to God. But I think my sort of confession is, do I use that access enough? Psalm 100 says, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth, worship the Lord with gladness come before him know that the lord is god it is he who has made us and we are his we are his people the sheep of his pasture enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise i can enter the courts of the creator of the universe do we realize that when we pray we are entering the throne room, the presence of God, the creator of the universe. And yet often I choose some other trivial way of spending my time. And for me, this relationship between Abraham and God is central to the story. It helps us understand Abraham's heart. It lets us know more about God's heart, but it lets us know what gave Abraham that sort of guts, if you will, to approach God like he did. And it's because Abraham had this relationship with God. He felt able to approach God. And God wants to commune with Abraham. God wants to, we have this conversation between God and the angels that he wants to talk to Abraham. He said, should I include Abraham in what I'm about to do? And he's saying, yeah, I want to because I know Abraham. Abraham's going to do these amazing things. So I want to talk to him about it. And this relationship is key because it allows Abraham to have the confidence to intercede. If God says to me, Mike, I want you to be involved in this situation. That gives me a certain permission to say, God, I would love to be involved in that situation. Can I tell you what I really want to pray about? But at the same time, Abraham does something really helpful to us. He remembers his position before God. It says in verse 27, then Abraham spoke up again. Now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, though I am nothing but dust and ashes. I mean, that reminds us something that maybe we forget uh, it reminds us that God is God and we are not. It reminds us that Abraham knows who God is. He knows he is, he is nothing compared to God. And yet God includes him into it. But he approaches God fully aware of that relationship. It is a humble approach. It is a worshipful approach. It is an honouring and fearful approach. 
God loves that Abraham can come to him. But God also loves that Abraham comes to him knowing who God is. And we get that, verse 23. It says, then Abraham approached God. And for me, I was sitting reflecting on this and thinking, you know, it, I mean, it's a massive verse that the strength of Abraham's relationship is on show here. Who, who of any of us would even consider approaching God in the first place? But to approach God, to inquire whether God might possibly change his mind, that speaks about Abraham's relationship. And so I just want us to pause there and say, that is the relationship that God wants with all of us. He wants that closeness that where you know that permission to come into one another's pressure, that open door policy. You know who you can ring up and they will take some time to speak to you. You know whose door you can knock on and they would invite you in for a meal. Our relationship with God needs to be like that because God has made it like that. Enter his courts. It's an invite, an invitation, but we don't take that invitation up. So this word intercede here, this go between, it calls us to intercede between the world, between people, between situations and God. It means to use your influence to persuade someone in authority to forgive another. We have influence because we know God. We have a relationship with God. So a situation that needs God's input, we can call on him. If my car has broken down, I'm going to ring up Andrew Horner and say, Andrew, do you know someone that could come and fix my car? If the, if the cry of someone is so loud that only God can do something about it, I'm going to say, I know God. I'm going to ask him. So what breaks your heart? What gets you, your heart going because you're so either frustrated about it or so passionate about it? What breaks God's heart? When these two things join, I think we get to see God move. Often what breaks our heart is the focus of much of our energy. What injustice do we want God to break into? What life do we want God to break into? What situation do we want God to break into? What difficulty do we want God to shine some light on? Abraham wanted God to break into this situation in Sodom and Gomorrah, which for many of us, would be something we wouldn't do. Maybe we felt they were getting what they deserved. We know sometimes God needs to act with justice. Justice he alone can give. And they were bad people. I mean, they were really evil. It says their sin was so grievous that I will go down. This is God talking. Their sin is so grievous that I will go down and see what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. Wow. Wow. If God had to go and visit, this is more than a letter home from the headmaster. This is a visit from the headmaster to your parents' place of work to confront them and find out just how bad their child is. And in all that, Abraham was willing to face God to a situation which we may think they deserved all they got. But he goes into the situation seemingly to haggle God down with regards to a judgment. And six times Abraham comes back to God and asks and intercedes. He steps in for the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham longed for God to show mercy, even for those who we might think are not deserving of it. Abraham had family in that city who may have been the only four good people there. But you see, God is God and we are not. But Abraham had been called to intercede, to speak on behalf of people who could not, would not or unable to even know why they should talk to God. And I think today God still prompts us to intercede in this way, to step in, to bring the cries of people to the Father. And he does that by almost punching us in the gut with the Spirit. What gets us going? What really makes us want to say I need to do something about that Romans 8 in the same way the spirit helps us in our weakness we do not know what we ought to pray but the spirit himself intercedes through wordless groans and he who searches our heart knows the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for God's 
people. What breaks my heart? What breaks God's heart? They are probably something that you can have a conversation with God about. You can intercede with him about. David Wilkerson, who wrote The Cross and, Cross and the Split Spade, who was one of the significant books in my own coming to faith, he said it's impossible to waste time when you're in prayer. It's impossible to waste time. We're really good at wasting time. I'm really good at wasting time. But what breaks your heart? Where do you want to intercede? The relationship is there. You have it with God. We just need to be the go-between. And you know what? God loves it when we choose to commune with him, to seek his heart. He loves it when we share what breaks our heart. So what are the cries that needs, what are the cries you know that need to reach the ears of God? A place in the world? Yemen, Brazil, America, St Albans? Maybe it's a lost friend or family member. Maybe a lonely, distraught colleague. Maybe a group of people that are always on your mind. Young people, families, the homeless, those that struggle with debt, those that struggle with mental health, those going through grief. Maybe another helpful learning from this passage is Abraham's persistence and resilience. He kept coming back for God, asking for more justice, like Jacob wrestling for more. Our prayers should bother God. They should prompt him to hear the cries of those we're praying for. And this might not happen by praying once or twice or even 20 times, but we are called to intercede. We are called to pray and prayer will never be a waste of time. We just need to make time for it. Let me end with this. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Let's approach God and intercede for the things that are on our heart. Amen. Such an amazing uh, responsibility and privilege, isn't it, to be God's partners in interceding for his world. If, like me, you were both inspired by those words of Mike's, but also a little bit intimidated, um, perhaps you'd join me in praying now because uh, I can't do that on my own. None of us can. And we need the Holy Spirit to help us to pray with us and through us. So let's pray together and ask God to reinvigorate us, to re-inspire, re-energise us for this task of intercession. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your heart of love. Help us, Lord, to share that, to be, to be willing to have our hearts broken for what breaks yours, to allow you to speak through us as we pray. Help us to bear people, situations, events on our hearts, to wrestle with you, to persist when it's hard, but to know that great privilege of loving people through praying for them. And help us to remember that no time that we spend in prayer is wasted and that you are there to help us and speak and work through us. And thank you, Lord, that your grace is enough for this and for everything we need. Amen.
Father, we thank you that you were lifted on high for us, that your love was poured out in abundance for us. And so would you fill us and bless us this week, that we might share that love, that abundance with others. Walk with us, we pray, in everything that we're about to face. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. God bless you.